you know, we're talking about preparation in the kitchen. Uh, that we're talking about, we need to prepare our environment to make a shift in the way we relate to food, okay? In terms of the cookware that you're using, uh, I wanna just, just go over this very quickly because it's so very important. Um, basically get rid of any cookware, cookware that you have that has Teflon on it. A Teflon is not, it's just not a great thing to be cooking on. Um, and it's certainly not a great thing to take into your body in any amount. Uh, no matter what the producers of Teflon and the creators of Teflon covered pans and pots will say, uh, this stuff is not good. Also, if you happen to have birds in your home like uh, parrots or canary birds, uh, Teflon is absolutely poisonous to birds. So if you overheat your pan and the, and the Teflon fumes uh, get into your home, it can literally kill your birds. And by the way, that's enough for me to know that I actually don't want to put that in my body either. So what can we replace our Teflon pans and pots with? Number one choice, and again, this is a financial consideration, but all of these choices are good. But again, as you know, you invest in cookware. Uh, it's expensive, right? But you can always buy used, um, especially if you buy ceramic cookware, that's number one. Ceramic cookware and bakeware, amazing, super healthy for you and really fun to cook with. Holds heat really well, uh, 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 spreads the heat really well, just a great thing. Next, cast iron cookware, really good to cook with. It's a little bit uh, difficult in terms of its upkeep. So that takes a little bit. You, there are people who use cast iron cookware who really know how to take care of it and, and they will tell you that it takes a little effort. So either you want to learn that um, or you don't. You don't have to have cast iron cookware. It's just another option. Uh, the Le Creuset, the Le Creuset, uh, that's L-E, new word, C-R-E-U-S-E-T, the enameled cast iron and stoneware uh, cookware is incredible. Um, then there's glass and corningware, and then finally stainless steel. So I will cook with stainless steel. I'm okay with it. It's a little less expensive, certainly than the ceramic uh, uh, cookware. However, if you have ever cooked with a ceramic pot or pan, you kind of fall in love with it. It's just amazing. So uh, those are some suggestions. Mostly what we're trying to do is to prepare our kitchen and to prepare ourselves uh, for the intake of really well-cooked, really well-prepared, healthy food. Now we also, uh, want to have a salad spinner. Uh, as, as mundane as that item might seem to you, I cannot tell you, I love my salad spinner. Um, you can get them uh, anywhere that they sell um, kitchen goods. So a salad spinner makes your life easier. You're going to want to wash your vegetables because you're going to buy organic vegetables. And the organic vegetables, especially the ones you buy in the farmer, from farmers at the farmer's market, are going to have dirt on them and that's a great thing. So we wanna get our food from the source or as close to the source as possible. And so we're gonna wash our food and in order to great, make a great, great salad, it really helps to have a great salad spinner. Okay, let's see. Finally, um, get, filling your, your kitchen with the things that you're going to need to cook with, the actual food products, the spices, the oils, the seeds and the nuts, you're going to need a shopping list. Um, later on when I talk to you about, uh, you're probably aware that we're doing a Recovery 2.0 food course uh, for an entire month through September. And we're gonna give everybody each week a pretty incredible, well-detailed shopping list to help people along to really know exactly what to get, why you're getting it, how it can be helpful to you. And then we're gonna actually do actual cooking with the products that we're gonna buy. So. The shopping list is key. Let me give you a couple items right off the bat uh, to help you. Um, with spices, salt and pepper. We're gonna wanna have grinders. We're gonna wanna get our pepper, which is just an organic uh, whole peppercorn that we grind ourselves. The salt that we choose is really, really, imp actually so important. If you wanna stay away from uh, table salt or any iodized salts, um, those are basically uh, 
what are chemical, there, there's salt that's been turned into something else. It, yes, it is salt, but it's also been changed from its natural state. It's also been stripped of some of the micronutrients that naturally occur in salt. So the salt that we want to get is salt from pristine environments, Himalayan sea salt, other forms of sea salt, Celtic sea salt. Um, and often you'll get salt and it has a little bit of coloring to it. It could be pink or it could be a little brown or dark gray. And that's wonderful. That is, the, those are the minerals that occur naturally in the salt and we want those trace minerals. So really great uh, to get good sources of salt and pepper. And beyond that, of course, for me, I love Indian food. So, and you might also, or you might love Thai food, or you might love another kind of ethnic food or Mexican food, whatever it is. So you're gonna become familiar with the spicing of the kinds of foods that you like to eat. For me, I would never want my kitchen to be without curry, right? So I'm gonna get organic curry, uh, turmeric uh, in powder form. All this is organic, right? Cumin uh, and, and coriander, ginger. Obviously with ginger, I can get fresh ginger and I can juice it and put it in my, my soups and my stews and my sauces and my smoothies and my juices. I can also get turmeric fresh and I can juice that as well. So these are wonderful things to have in the kitchen at any given time. Also, oils. So you wanna be careful with oils. Uh, oils are one of the things that can really hurt the body. They can also really help the body. Uh, cooking with oils that degrade or break down in high heat uh, is not a great idea. Certainly the best oil to cook with, most people agree on this, is coconut oil. Uh, and you want to get a raw, organic, uh, extra virgin coconut oil and cooking with that, it is, first of all, it's delicious. Um, and uh, you can also cook with ghee, which is clarified butter. You can also cook with butter. Those are actually the next choices. If you don't like animal products, stick with the coconut oil. Uh, certainly you can cook with olive oil, but you want to be medium to low heat. And you want to make sure not to get to the smoke point of any of these oils. Where the oils start to smoke, that means the oil is now what I would consider to be toxic to the body. And I would not cook with that oil. It's reached the, the smoke point, And so you want to avoid that. Now, if I'm going fast, um, we have a lot to cover tonight. So I'm just going to keep going through it. Avocado oil is a great, great oil. It stands up in high heat. And uh, we're just not going to cover all the oils tonight, but I love that you knew about that. Um, and it's also super, super healthy and it's delicious raw as well. Okay, so we're talking about prepping the environment and we're talking about bringing certain things into the kitchen to get yourself ready. We're also going to want to get certain things out of the kitchen. Okay, what do we want to get out of the kitchen? Well, we'd like to remove the kitchen of the foods that are not good for you. Straight up, uh, processed foods. What do I mean when I say processed foods? I wanna be very specific on this point because I think a lot of people mean different things. Okay, getting rid of processed foods, for me, this is not all processed foods. I wanna tell you what I mean by that. Getting rid of processed foods actually means getting rid of the foods that contain unnatural, harmful, additives. These are unnecessary things that human beings put in food products for reasons that I don't completely understand. Things like sugar, things like high fructose corn syrup, um, and other chemicals that you can't even read the name of what it is. Why is that in my food? If I'm going to eat naturally, and if the tendency and the idea is to move towards a natural way of eating, then I'm gonna to wanna to get rid of the foods that are processed where they've added a bunch of crap into those foods. Now, some people will say, well, wait a minute, Tommy. Isn't bread a processed food? Yes, bread is a processed food. We take wheat or another grain and we process it and we cook it and we raise it into what we know as bread. So human beings have to do something to it. We have to put it through a process to create bread as we know it. However, for me, depending on the bread and depending on your constitution and what works for your body, some breads 
really, really work and some breads really, really don't, at least for me. And each of us has to be the scientist for ourselves and know what is gonna work for, for you. So with me, there's a woman who's at the farmer's market that I go to every week and she is from Latvia and she makes the most incredible rye bread. She is the Latvian rye bread woman. And I visit her once a week to buy a loaf of this very dense, unbelievably delicious rye bread, which has nothing in it except exactly what you would need to be in it for it to be a healthy loaf of rye bread. No additives whatsoever. It's just the pure thing. And when I speak to her and I say, you know, why do you do this? How did you come to make this bread? She tells the great story that we want to hear from anybody. My grandmother, <laughs> we want that story. My grandma and my mother and then me, we made this bread. And when I came to the United States, I could not find real bread anywhere. I couldn't find anybody making bread, at least not the bread that I came to know as bread. So I started to make it and sell it. So unbelievably delicious, healthy bread, which by the way, I am not gluten intolerant. I don't have a problem with wheat and I don't have a problem with gluten. However, some of the breads that I have eaten uh, make me bloated and make me feel not great. This bread never does that. So what you're looking for is a really, really healthy version. And you basically, it's hard to get in any market unless it's a specialty market. And it may be expensive, but boy, oh boy, is it worth it. And that loaf of bread lasts me, you know, a week to 10 days. Um, so pretty incredible. So we want to be uh, careful to get the processed foods with crap in it out of the kitchen. And that would be a preparation day. Uh, and if you come and join us in our coaching program, this, uh, in our food program, this is going to be one of the days that we spend is there's going to be a prep day where we're actually going into our kitchen and we're getting rid of the stuff that, we, that is no longer going to serve us. Okay. So a quick word here on the gut biome. Now, anybody who knows, you know that we could speak for the next six hours about the gut biome. And all the gut biome is, is it is the, the environment in your digestive tract, uh, your intestines, your stomach, esophagus. It is the whole environment of creatures that are alive in there. And they make up your gut biome. And as it turns out, when there's a balance in there, things go well. When there's an imbalance in there, things don't go so well. What causes the imbalance? Um, diets that are high in sugar, fat, uh, fried foods, that creates an imbalance in the gut biome. Um, antibiotics, one of the worst, worst thing that we can do. Uh, obviously, we're happy to have antibiotics when we absolutely need them as a court of last resort. Unfortunately, many of us are living in such stress and with such a poor diet that we get sick and we end up having to take antibiotics, which creates this vicious cycle in our gut biome. We never quite get back on track. It, it is responsible for so much degenerative disease. It is responsible for so much of the discomfort and dis-ease that, that you might feel. So bringing the gut biome back into balance is a major league topic. A lot of people talk about probiotics. And if you're not aware, my, my method in terms of my diet is get as close to the source of the food as possible. If you can grow it yourself, that's a way to go. If not, get it from someone else who grew it directly, a farmer. If not, get it from a really healthy organic store where it hasn't been on the shelf too long. If not, just, you know, you keep going down the road and you get the best food available to you. So when it comes to probiotics, for me, I'm not into the powders. They serve, you know, a lot of powder probiotics and some of them, don't get me wrong, some of them are very good. Some of them are very good. I would prefer, however, for me to get my pro probiotics from natural foods. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the famous natural probiotic concoction, which of course I will share with you in the course 
and we'll go into how can we bring probiotics into the body naturally in a way that your body can take in and immediately use. It knows just what to do. So we're talking about a concoction that would include something like miso, a miso paste, a black pepper, sauerkraut, coconut water, kefir, ginger, these kinds of things, creating a tonic out of that. And drinking that as the first thing you drink every morning and then before you go to Betty Bye. Talk about a reboot for your gut biome. Wow. So I'm excited, obviously, passionate about this topic. We'll talk more about it um, when we get into the course next month. Okay. A lot of people ask, what about restaurants? What do I do? I, I, I don't want to cook every night, every meal for myself. And I understand that. I also love going out and eating. I really love dining out. So what do you do? Well, first of all, you have to understand that once you get dialed in the kitchen, there's no restaurant that's going to do it as good as you. There's no restaurant. No matter how good you think it is, there's no restaurant that can cook as healthy and as correct for you than you. However, you go out to restaurants where they share uh, your zest and your flair for really good, healthy food, which they have purchased, hopefully that day, from a farmer, hopefully, where the food is fresh, hopefully organic, and where when you eat there, you notice something happens. When you leave that restaurant, you feel good, okay? It's gonna be so, so, so important. Now, we can speak about restaurants forever. I just want you to know, there's no deterrent, there's no reason not to go to a restaurant. You just wanna make sure that you're eating good food and that when you leave the restaurant, you feel good when you left, that it was a good experience, not just being there with friends and family, but also that it, it helped you to feel good when you got out. Okay, uh, what about travel? This is the other thing. People are like, Tommy, tell me, my God, I'm on the road. Or how do you do it, Tommy? You're on the road. And I'll tell you, it's tough. It's tough, you gotta get organized. You know, when I get on a plane, first of all, before I get on a plane, I hydrate. So I drink a liter of water. Now I know what you're thinking. You're gonna have to get up on the plane six times and go to the bathroom. For me, I don't care. I'd rather be well hydrated on a tin can that's flying just underneath the sun, high in the atmosphere. I'd rather be well hydrated than not. And you know what I notice? When I get to my destination, if it's, if it's a long haul, I feel less jet lag, much less when I'm well hydrated. Now, what about food? Well, on the hydration front also, bring a little lemon. Bring a lemon with you and squeeze it into water and drink it while you're on the plane also. Really, really, it's gonna help. It'll be very helpful in terms of electrolytes and uh, just keeping you, keeping you going, right? Also, with food, I bring my own food. I make a salad bring a little olive oil in a little container, squeeze my lemon and that olive oil on a nice salad, and you know you're gonna make a lot of friends because the people next to you are gonna be like, uh, can I have some of that? You know, you know they're thinking it. And you can bring, you know, if you, eat, if you eat bread, you can bring a little beautiful piece of rye bread from the Latvian rye bread woman, and boom, you've got a meal right there on the plane. One of the keys is don't ever overeat on a plane. <laughs> don't ever overeat on a plane just eat light drink stay hydrated and you're good to go okay 